Welcome, Amy, to Executive Thank you so much, Sasha, for having me on your wonderful show. I'm happy to be here with you. So, Amy, do you have a morning ritual? What is it? Um, I do. You know, I like to uh, start each day um, being grateful to be alive and um, thanking all of the people in my life that I hold dear. So I say a personal prayer for the beautiful opportunity to be the mother of my two amazing children, Maxwell and Ruby. And I say a prayer of being grateful that I found the love of my life with my amazing husband, Scott, who actually also happens to be my business partner. So we get to go on that incredible journey together. Um, And I also just recognize people in my life that I've loved dearly um, who are no longer here in the physical form. And I just take a moment to honor what they mean uh, to me and how I can keep their memory alive by just doing good deeds that honor their legacy. So that's the way that I actually like to start and end um, every day. And I feel like it kind of grounds me and centers me in the things that are most important to me, which are um, based on love and, and family. What is the best constructive guidance you've received in your career? You know, it's actually probably uh, some words of wisdom that uh, Nima, my grandma, who raised me, told me, and that was never, ever, ever give up. Um, And I think that helped mold me into a very tenacious person. I was told often that my dreams were stupid. What I wanted to accomplish was impossible, um, especially building a career in the entertainment industry with, you know, no connections to Hollywood and starting my business, literally cold calling people and showing up at the offices of companies that I wanted to work with, you know, at 19 years old. And I always had my grandma's voice in my head telling me to never, ever, ever give up. And knowing that the dreams that I had were worth pursuing and that with time and effort and sheer will and determination that I could make them a reality, that was like the fuel for my fire that I needed when days were were long and hard. And, you know, it felt like, should I throw the towel in? I would just always remember that I have to keep pushing forward. Amy, do you have any hidden talent? (laughs) Um, I think probably my best Uh, trait would just be connecting with people, Um, being able to authentically be myself and make a safe space for other people to be their authentic selves. Um, I really believe that you haven't lived until you've shared both joy and pain with other human beings. And so the way the way to do that is to just connect in deep and meaningful ways. And I think that's probably one of my best qualities. What is the most courageous thing that you've done in the past year? In the past year, um, I think recognizing during the pandemic um, that my mental health was suffering um, because I wasn't able to do the same things as part of my um, normal routine because I was, you know, working from home and, you know, trying to keep our family safe. Um, Hot yoga for me is one of the most powerful tools in my toolbox on my journey of healing from the trauma that I experienced as a survivor of domestic violence and sexual assault and human trafficking. And during, you know, the height of the pandemic, I was unable to go um, to those classes. And that's really where I release a lot of my um, physical pain, but also my emotional trauma from those experiences. And not being able to have that sense of community with the people that I practice yoga with, and also that that release, which I rely on for my mental health, was difficult. So I had to find, you know, the, the courage to um, and the compassion to treat myself with grace and kindness and recognize that I was still going to be okay 
And when I was having a rough day or, you know, things were coming up and I was being triggered, just being able to rely on the things that I learned in my yoga practice and do them at home by myself and take that moment to breathe or take 15, 20 minutes out to meditate and just come back to this sense of peace and calm um, that I, I really needed. What is the true meaning of true heart? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so true heart is, I think, what I've embodied my whole life, um, this, this um, ability to be authentically myself. And I believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe. It definitely transformed my life in the most beautiful ways. So having a true heart is doing things from a place of love and wanting to ease other people's pain and suffering and just being a helper. I believe that if everybody does a few, you know, good deeds every day, these small random acts of kindness create a ripple effect of goodness in the universe. And so to me, that's what being a true heart is all about. And it's, you know, my my personal brand of who I am as a human being. And then what I help shape my purpose driven companies um, to to represent. Amy, when the heart and mind don't agree, what do you do? Yeah, so I'm a person that definitely leads with my heart uh, first. Um, I'm definitely very emotionally uh, and heart-centered. And my husband is more um, thinking everything through kind of like with rationale and, and logic and reason. So I think we make a great team in balancing each other out. Um, and so if we, in our business life together, come up with, um, a situation that's not making sense. And I feel one way, you know, very strongly emotionally, and Scott feels one way very strongly um, coming from an intellectual standpoint. We'll kind of discuss our, our feelings and weigh the pros and cons of the situation. Ultimately, we always end up trusting our gut. I think intuition is one of our most powerful tools that we all need to learn how to tap into. So if we feel pulled in a certain direction by our intuition, then that's always our, our guiding force that we follow. What is your favorite comfort food? Oh, my gosh. So when I was pregnant um, with our daughter, Ruby, I had hyperemesis, and um, I couldn't really eat anything. But mangoes are what sustained <laughs> me throughout my entire pregnancy. So I used to joke that my daughter was like my little mango in my tummy. I was only able to eat like a few mangoes a day, and that's what sustained me and kept me going. So when I think about just like how much joy and love my daughter has brought into my life, I, I think back to like it all started with these mangoes that kept me going um, during that difficult pregnancy. So there's, there's comfort and joy and, and love for me in, in eating a mango. Amy, do you have any pet peeves? Yeah, um, for me, I think when people, um, you know, are not coming with, with good energy into a, a relationship, I, I feel like hurt people hurt people. So if you haven't kind of resolved trauma or, or tragedy in your past and you haven't been willing to face that, then sometimes you can operate from a place of being negative or, or toxic. And I think a lot of times people don't mean to do that because they're hurting, they're, they're suffering. And so it's not so much as a pet peeve of mine, but more just wanting to see people feel good and be healthy in body, mind, and spirit. So I wish people would practice self-care more so that they would feel good about themselves and be able to live the happy and healthy life that they deserve, but then also so their interactions with other human beings are happy, healthy, and positive. Is there any book that you have read recently or a show that you have binge watched? Well, one of my favorite books uh, of all time that I go back to and I reread every few years um, is a brilliant book called The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. And um, Gavin is also a survivor of interpersonal uh, violence. And he wrote this book about tapping into uh, the fear that we sometimes feel and not being afraid of that, but it's our 
our body giving us these warning signs, you know, like when your heart starts racing or your stomach's in knots or you get the chills. This is your body's warning system, the ways to spot the red flags um, or the warning signs of a dangerous situation. And that if we learn to tap into that, it's a really helpful tool. Um, Gavin's gone on to protect U.S. presidents, world leaders, um, A-list celebrities. He's probably one of the world's most uh, foremost experts on uh, personal security and, and safety. So for me, reading this book was a game changer in my life, and I recommend it to everyone um, because it, it shows you that sometimes when you're feeling afraid, that's not a bad thing. It's just it's actually listening to your gut to protect you from a situation that might not be serving you. And what is the last thing you do before calling it a day? I always love to spend time uh, with Scott, my husband. Um, You know, we like to relax and unwind with um, some of our favorite shows. Um, It's just a great way to kind of like de-stress and, you know, put everything from the day that we worked on like behind us and like just laugh together um, and enjoy some quality time. And then we always kind of like review the day of of what happened and talk about like what's coming up next for our family and for our business over the next few days. And finally, Amy, what do you do and where can people find you? Well, thanks for asking, Sasha. Um, We, as I mentioned earlier, uh, love to do a little bit of good every day. And we want to invite everyone into our True Heart community to join us. Um, in giving back. So we have our cause agency that connects celebrities and purpose-driven brands to team up and help raise millions of dollars for great causes. And then we just launched our True Heart Social Impact search engine earlier this summer. And that's a free and easy way for everyone to change the world just by searching the web. So you're doing something like looking at cute puppy videos or checking the weather or booking a dinner reservation anyway online. Now you can do that with us at trueheart.com. And we donate 80% of our net profits to our six charity partners, Smile Train, Action Against Hunger, Global Green, PFLAG National, Four Paws for Ability, and Variety Boys and Girls Club. And these are incredible nonprofits that work tirelessly every day to save lives, feed the hungry, protect the planet, promote animal welfare, fight for equality, and support our youth. And so when you search with us, your search is power donations to our nonprofit partners, and we show you where every dollar goes to make a difference. So, for example, with our friends at Global Green, we're uh, planting trees in the Amazon rainforest to save that precious ecosystem. With our friends at Action Against Hunger, they are providing meals and essential services to families in over 46 countries. And with our friends at Variety Boys and Girls Club, they are providing college scholarships to incredibly talented and deserving kids in communities of high need. So we produce these beautiful impact videos where you can see the results of everyone in the True Heart community coming together to make a difference. And it's our belief that there are billions of people in the world with big, beautiful hearts who want to transform their local communities, but they don't have the financial means to donate to charity. So this is a way for them to be included in philanthropy, and it's a way where we were able to help democratize it um, and invite everybody in. So whether you're eight or you're 80 years old, you can just take out your phone, your tablet, your computer, make us your default search engine. It takes about 10 seconds. And commit to consciously having your searches have an environmental and social impact. So um, the more people that search with us, the bigger the impact we can make. And our ambitious goal is to donate $1 billion to charity. And obviously, the more we grow, we can then start supporting more wonderful nonprofits um, who are doing amazing things um, around the world. So um, you can also check us out on social media at We Are True Heart, exactly as those four words are spelled on Instagram, Facebook, and, and Twitter. And you can keep up with our social impact campaigns there. Thank you, Amy, for sharing your insight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha, for having me. It was a pleasure to be with you on Execupeak.